all. I'm honored to be here. Let's begin our time together by sharing the tradition of reciting Girl Scout Cross and Law here. Please remain muted and you can speak along with my voice. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Thank you, Olivia. The promise and law are important foundations to Girl Scouts. And an important tradition in Girl Scouts is singing. And in recognition of this evening's event, which we're calling On My Honor, we thought it would be most appropriate to share a special song that's called On My Honor. This is actually shared by Girl Scouts and Girl Guides around the world. And it's particularly telling that this evening we're, we will have a live rendition. Doing the honors on her guitar is a longtime Girl Scout lifetime member. She's also a mom of a daughter, Anna, who just graduated from high school. And she too is a lifetime member. So please welcome with me, Karen Graham. Hello everyone. Hillary's clapping, I love that. Um, so we are going to do, uh, like uh, Marcy said, on my honor, we're gonna sing the chorus, two verses, the chorus, two more verses, and then the chorus instead of trying to do the chorus every other uh, verse. Um, I do want to recognize that this song was written by a woman by the name of Cindy Dash. Uh, I like to give credit to um, the songwriters, especially of Girl Scout songs, and I believe it was uh, written in the 70s. She first published it in the, 1980, in the 80s, and uh, I believe she was with the Quincy, Illinois Council. So everyone's muted. That's good. So chorus, two verses, chorus, two verses. And I believe Sarah has put the lyrics in the chat area. So if you don't know the song, you can uh, look there for that. On my honor, I will try. There's a duty to be done, and I say hi. There's a reason here for a reason above. My honor is to try, and my duty is to love. People don't need to know my name If I've done any harm, then I'm to blame If I've helped another, then I help me If I've opened up my eyes to see And I've tucked away a song or two If you're feeling low, there's one for you If you need a friend, then I will come And there's many more where I come from on my honor, I will try. There's a duty to be done, and I say I. There's a reason here for a reason above. My honor is to try, and my duty is to love. Come with me where the fire burns bright. We can even see better by a candle's light. We can find more meaning in a campfire's glow than we'll ever learn in a year or so. We've made a promise to always keep And a prayer falls softly before we sleep We'll be Girl Scouts together and when we're done We'll still be a trying and a singing the song and On my honor I will try There's a duty to be done and I say I There's a reason here for a reason above My honor is to try and my duty is to love my honor is to try, and my duty is to love. That was so special, Karen. I feel the emotion in me listening to the words as you sang. What a lovely way to begin our celebration. I'm thinking of all the change that we've endured here. 
and how normally Karen would have been standing on date and we'd all be in the same room together celebrating. But at 15 years old, I already know that change is just a success. It's been 108 years since Juliet Gordon Lowe brought forward her vision to build girls of courage, competence, and character. All four women can even vote. And you know what today is? It's the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment. Akshita and I, and really all of us here on this call, are here because of the change brought about in America by one single woman. Juliet Gordon Lowe was an agent for change, but didn't do it alone. She had lots of helpers. It takes lots of mentors and lots of strong leaders to support and nurture a girl movement. Tonight we celebrate nine of the brightest stars in the Badgerland Valley, and we will begin with the presentation of our GIRL award winners. In Girl Scout speak, these are go-getters, innovators, risk takers, and leaders. Let's meet them. Go-getter because the girls in my troop had big dreams of smashing their previous cookie sale results and I really just wanted to be the wind in their sails and I worked to support them in every way I possibly could. Girl Scouts has changed my life because it centers the girl in her own life and in her own experience. As women, we are so often asked in ways that are big and in ways that are small to center other people and shift our attention away from ourselves. So being a Girl Scout myself as a child and supporting Girl Scouts now as a leader, I really value all the ways in which the Girl Scout mission and the Girl Scout programs not only put the girls at the center, but also teach them that that is where they belong. It's really gratifying to watch them grow and learn and set out what they achieve to do. I'm an innovator because I think that I like to tackle uh, tackle problems, find opportunities to really think creatively and try new things. And I am so honored to have a troop that sort of comes along with me. My Girl Scout troop has changed my life. Uh, I've watched these young people go through eight years of, of development um, and seeing the risks that they've taken, seeing the things they've done, stepping out of their comfort zone, supporting each other. Um, it has truly been an honor to watch that and it also gives me the courage to, to take risks, to try new things and to think creatively about what's next and what can we do to, um, to enhance our troop but also just make the world a better place. Um, I volunteer for Girl Scouts because I grew up as a Girl Scout. I earned my gold award. Um, Girl Scouts gave me a lot and I want to make sure that I give back what I got as a child. Girl Scouts changed my life in so many ways. I met so many amazing people. It gave me definite connections. It gave me confidence to do things that I didn't think I could do, especially when I was a younger girl. I am a risk taker, I guess. I wouldn't consider myself a risk taker in my everyday life, um, but in Girl Scouts I am. I want to make sure that I take the risks so that I can provide and demonstrate and show those girls things that are amazing and things that they would never thought of doing on their own. I definitely want to give the girls those experiences. I volunteer with Girl Scouts because it is a way to give back. It's also a great opportunity to spend time with my daughters and watch them try new things and grow. I was a Girl Scout growing up and camp had a big impact on me. I gained confidence and independence while I was there. It was empowering to be among a group of women that were confident in who they were and encouraged each other through challenges. I'm a leader because I'm passionate about Girl Scouts. I think it's important that leaders work together to help expand on the opportunities available to the girls. I think that together we can help empower and encourage the girls.
That was so much fun to watch. And speaking of girl ed, that video was produced by Ambassador Girl Scout Annie Leffel. How great is that? I want to call attention to the chat log feature of Zoom. Let's use that tonight to celebrate our amazing volunteers. Badgerland Sarah Rogers is going to be moderating the chat. Sarah, can you say hi? I sure can, Olivia. Hello, my fellow Girl Scouts. I am sitting here like the rest of you, so excited to meet our nine shining stars. I also am really excited to hear what you have to say about them. We know there's friends, there's family on, we got fellow troop members. But I'm putting a call out to you to encourage you throughout this evening as we progress to put your stories, your thoughts, your adoration of those fellow volunteers in the chat log and where we all get to see them and all get to share with them. So thank you for doing that. I can't wait to see what comes through. Sounds good. Thanks, Sarah. So one by one, I will call your name and invite you to mute and we'll have a brief conversation. Sound good? We'll start with our go-getter, Katty Kaufman, a troop leader from Monona. Hi, Katie. Hi. Want to go ahead and unmute yourself? I, I think I've done so. Hi. Hi. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. Hi. It's good to see you. I'm glad that you're here for our event today. So, I, I hear you are a cookie. Oh, Olivia, you're um, cutting out a bit. <laughs> Olivia said that. said that you're a cookie captain and that tell us a little bit about being at the helm of your troop for this unconventional cookie season. Um, I enjoyed it so much. Honestly, I, uh, supporting the girls is a thing that I love to do, but I also am one of those people who sort of loves herself an Excel, an Excel spreadsheet and <laughs> loves the inventory and the tracking bit of it. So it was very natural as I started to get more involved in my daughter's troop to take on that role. It was a ton of fun and it was really lovely to see them stretch and then meet goals and then stretch some more and then meet those goals again. It was really inspiring. That's awesome to hear. So beyond working with the girls on setting goals and working together, I know you're also committed to giving your Girl Scouts the outdoors experience. One of your nominators said, and I quote, Katie is our troop expert camping planner. She organizes the food, the chore list, the packing list for the girls, and the activities, all without breaking a sweat. She has helped the girls experience the fun of camping while taking all the stress out of it for the parents and the other two leaders. Oh, <laughs> why is the outdoor experience so important to you? You know, my family grew up camping and I think it's really powerful to um, share that experience specifically with girls. I have three brothers, so I will acknowledge that it's really fun to go camping with the Girl Scouts because you get a chance to actually make the fire and you get a chance to show them how it's done. Um, so I think it's really powerful, particularly to share that experience with an all female crew. I, I want them to feel like they can do it, and I know that they can, so. Awesome to hear. Yeah, it definitely sounds like camping with Girl Scouts might be a little bit more fun. Caddy, <laughs> Katie, Katie, you're truly a go-getter. Thank you for all you do. Why don't we all have a round of applause for her? Thank you. <laughs> the I-G-I-R-L is innovator. And that is Karen Beckett Ball. Karen is co-leader of a Madison troop, uh, 1019. Karen, I understand girls are in eighth grade this fall and you have 12 girls in the troop. That's big, especially for eighth grade. Why don't you tell us more about the favorite activities that they like to do together? Hi, um, can everybody hear me okay? Okay, good. Um, I think, you know, I. So we've had a lot of years together to grow and sort of nurture our, our love of traveling. And I think when I think of our next big adventure, I think what our troop really thrives to do is, is travel. Um, we've been to South Dakota. We went to, uh, we, we've been to Juliet Lowe's house. We uh, stayed at her campground. Um, we've really been trying to visit all of the Girl Scout properties in the area. And so I think um, what our troop really loves to do is travel 
travel and just explore and be adventurous. That's really cool to hear. Yeah, it's important for girls to get out there to experience the world. So I understand you're also leading an ambitious girl goal for your Girl Scouts to do a teacher appreciation video. Do you mind telling us a little bit more about that project? Yeah, that actually started in first grade, and we've been doing it every, every year since. Um, we had to, of course, improvise a little bit this year, um, but each year, that's a, that's a big part of our, of our cookie sales, actually, is each uh, member of our troop invites a teacher who's made a difference in their lives to an event that we host. Um, we cook them a meal, and then we do things like we bring a massage therapist, and everybody gets a massage. We shower them with gifts. We've had comedians come to make them laugh, and we just kind of spend the night with them, um, honoring them as teachers uh, and as mentors and people in our lives who have made a big difference. And it's definitely the highlight of our year. We were so excited this year because we were going to have it at the Dream Bank, um, but I guess that's what next year is for. So That sounds really cool. That's awesome that you guys are doing that for teachers. <laughs> So when your troop members were nominating you, one of them said this, and I quote, from daisies through cadets, parents take challenges and face the twists and turns head on, including through this COVID pandemic. She continues to make sure the girls virtually are continuing to develop their, their silver ore project. She's a true definition of me. Congratulations, Karen. Why don't we all a round of applause for Thanks, everybody. Reminder. Thanks, Thanks for having into the chat log with any kudos, comments, or No, I don't think I'm muted yet. So this is just a reminder to be popping into the chat log with any kudos, comments, or stories you want to share with the group as we move along. So next in the GIRL, we have R, that stands for risk taker. Susan uh, Zerniak, the awesome risk taking troop leader from Le Whoop, looks like Olivia got a little frozen there. <clears throat> Are you back there with us, Olivia? I can take over for her. Oh, great. Thanks, Akshita. Okay, so we have Susan Zerniak. <laughs> Lake Mills. Um, it's really nice to be here with you today, Susan. Thank um, you. I'm excited. <laughs> I've heard you're a really busy person. You lead two Girl Scout troops. And we heard that they're having a really good time on their virtual troop meetings with like the emoji response cards you made for them. And you're also really active at the community level and you volunteer with Badger Lane events and there's so much more. What keeps you so engaged with Girl Scouts? Um, I'm a lifetime member. I got my gold as a girl. I worked for Girl Scouts when I was in college and I just really truly believe in its mission and I want to share it. Yeah, come back in. So I do. I have a troop of um, sixth graders and a troop of ninth graders. I am also the cookie PSM and nuts and candy PSM for my community. Um, I am the global roundtable mentor for um, Team Granada. Yay! <laughs> Even though we're not going to Florida this year, I'm still actively involved with those girls, and we're meeting with um, the Granada team. So. Yeah, I just, I love being involved with the Scouts and everything that it does. Yeah, that's awesome. It sounds like you're staying pretty busy with Girl Scouts. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's really sad that you're not able to go to Florida this year, but <laughs> that for a, minute, for a minute, if anyone on the call doesn't know about the event. Uh, about the roundtable event or about the national convention? Um, a little both. If you okay, so the Global Roundtable is an opportunity for four girls in our council um, to connect with 
other countries. So I am the mentor with two uh, of two girls, and we are working with the um, girls girl guides of Granada, and we are having virtual meetings with them. And we had hoped in October to meet them physically and take them to Disney World and do the conference with them and just really hang out and have this great um, global connection. The other team in our council is with Team Nigeria and they are still working with them. Um, and the, the six of us that are from Badgerland Council have met and uh, have worked together with uh, a couple of different instances and hope to still continue to work throughout the year even though we're not going to the convention. That's super awesome. Um, and in your nomination, they said, Susan is an inspiration. By watching her take risks and take the lead, I have grown in my own role as a Girl Scout. And I feel honored that she is a Girl Scout sister of mine. Susan, Aww. you are a G-I-R-L. A big congratulations on your award tonight. Thank you. Let's give it up for Susan. <laughs> Um, and then we have the L in G-I-R-L, and that stands for leader, and for that we have Kim Morris today. Hi. So Kim is a troop leader in Fitchburg, and she's also very active in her community, um, and she sits on the Badgerland Council delegates. So Kim, why is it so important for you to be involved in Girl Scouts? Because uh, especially at camp, I had some really great experiences and uh, formed some great relationships. And from my years uh, working on camp staff, I still am connected with some of the women years later, even uh, the generations before me are st it's still a connection. We actually missed our uh, big camp reunion this summer. But so just to have that connection and pass it on. That's really nice to hear. Um, so you're a troop leader, but this year you also took on the role of being the troop cooking coordinator and mm -hmm. coordinating cookies for the other troop that you lead. Yeah, for the troop my other daughter's in. Wow. So during quarantine, on one Friday afternoon, you drove by everyone's houses and picked up their vests and badges, and I quote, the troop looks good because of Kim. Kim, what keeps you motivated to keep doing so much for your Girl Scouts? Um, my daughters and like for the vets, I do them for the other girls, so I actually get them done for my girls. <laughs> it's a little motivation there. But um, with my two girls, I want to help them have the best Girl Scout experience they can have. That's awesome. So as one of your nominators said, Kim cultivates a girl-led environment and always finds a way to make sure girls have access to a warm, welcoming Girl Scouting program. Congratulations, Kim, and to all four GIRLL honorees. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so if you guys didn't catch this earlier, my name is Akshita Putnaik. And it is my privilege to be hosting this event along with Olivia today. Um, and next, we're moving on to the Girl Scouts of USA Awards. And we are beginning with the Volunteers of Excellence. I was first introduced to Girl Scouts when I was in the second grade. My mom became one of the leaders. Then I was reintroduced when my oldest daughter entered first grade. And again, when my oldest granddaughter entered kindergarten. I'm the main leader and here we are today with my daughter graduating this year. So it's been a lot of years in Girl Scouts, which I have just truly, thoroughly enjoyed. I decided to become a Girl Scout volunteer so that young ladies in our area could have a safe place to discover themselves and the world around us and what they truly enjoy doing. One thing that I love about being a leader and about being in Girl Scouts in general 
is it's a safe place for the girls to just be themselves, be silly, and that's what we've all loved. It's impacted me because I realize how wonderful the future of our world and our community is due to these brave and fierce young ladies. They are constantly amazing us with their ideas, their commitment, and their love of the community. Um, one thing that will always stick with me is just the random act of kindness that I've pushed my girls to do, and I think we all do that, and we will carry that throughout our rest of our lives. As, as a Girl Scout, being aware of, of who needs a smile for a day and just doing that kind of act. I have loved being a Girl Scout volunteer. I've learned something new with every generation. Just know that you have talents to share, you can spread your joy, there are a lot of people to help you do whatever it is you try, and know you're involved in with something really special. Awesome. So the Volunteer of Excellence Award recognizes these women's exceptional service in support of the Girl Scout mission. So first we have Stacy Hemphorn. Stacy, there. <laughs> um, I'm here. So Stacy has led a troop in Sparta for years. And some of her girls are high school seniors now. Um, one thing that was written about you and your nomination, Stacey, is that you're able to celebrate all your girls' strength while accommodating their individual needs. You really just get to know your girls. Tell us more about that. Um, can everybody hear me? Am I on? Okay. Um, I just, I have a different just so many different personalities and I'm down to five girls, but we have some that are just, you know, vibrating out of their seats and everybody accepts that and they love her for that. And we have another girl that's just so quiet and doesn't want to, to I don't know the word, to, to branch out and do fun things. But once she does it, she has such an amazing time. And I just love finding those strengths and weaknesses and just bringing them all together and having fun. So we really, really have a good time together now. That's awesome. And that's what you've stayed together for so many years. Mm -hmm. There are only five girls. Um, so you're super well known in your community for being involved in building and supporting Girl Scouting. Why is this mm -hmm. particularly important to you? I just to show my girls how to community service is just important. It's important to help I don't know, I'm terrible at speaking. I'm <laughs> sorry. It's important to show the girls just to help period that's important and just having the older girls teach the younger girls and all the different events we've done has been really inspiring to watch and those relationships form and i just i love it i love spending time everyone becomes a family it's because we are a small town and that's probably the best part about it is it's a family that's awesome so one of the people nominating you said Stacy has made the Gold Award a big push, supporting and encouraging all of her girls to go for gold. Mm -hmm. Without her leadership, these girls would have missed out on so many amazing opportunities. So let's all give Stacy a big round of applause. Thank you, everyone. So, Rita Treese, you are up next. All right. Can you hear her? Can you hear us? <laughs> yes. um, Rita is the kind of volunteer who rolls up her sleeves and gets the work done. <laughs> she's a troop leader. She's involved in her service unit in Sun Prairie. She's a familiar face to the Madison-based Badgerland team because she's frequently spotted in the service center stuffing envelopes just like she did all summer, getting camp packets out to campers. Rita, I know you've had a lot of experience leading brownie troops, but I understand that this past year you also started helping a daisy troop. So tell us more about how that's gone. We have 19 five and six year old girls in our daisy troop. Um, we meet once a month 
after school um, for about almost two hours, sometimes a little bit over and two hours. Um, and it, it has been a new experience for me. Um, that's the largest troop I've ever been a part of. But I have two great co-leaders and we have a great cookie coordinator and everything has been running really smoothly. That's great. Um, as a veteran troop leader, you're recognized and celebrated for mentoring new troop leaders. Um, so why is that important for new leaders to have old troop leaders like you connecting them and connecting them to like their troop? Um, I think everybody at one time or another wonders, how did I ever get myself into this? And I think that that's the most important part of Girl Scouts is to know that you have lots of people to reach out to, to help you through um, if you're feeling burned out, if you're not finding on Pinterest or uh, someplace the craft that you want, um, you have so many people to help out. And that's what I enjoy doing around um, Sun Prairie this time. Thank you, Rita. So in one of the words of the people who was nominating you, Rita is an amazing volunteer and just an all around wonderful person. She's happy to go the extra mile to ensure every girl in her community has access to be a Girl Scout. Congratulations again, Rita. Let's give her a big round of applause. Thank you so much. So lastly, Doreen Willie is receiving the Volunteer of Excellence pin today. She is a troop leader in Holman in La Crosse County, and she's also super involved in the community planning big events for girls in the area. Hello. Hi. Doreen, I hear you're a big planner and you do all the events like lock-ins and movie nights and bowling and hay rides and bonfires. And oh my God, I could keep going. But um, what the, whatever the girls come up with, we work together with our troop to make it happen. And they have great ideas more than any of myself or the, my co-leaders could come up with. And so they work to get it done. We just kind of are there to guide and facilitate where needed as an adult supervision. But um, our cadet troop is, they're rock stars. It's all about the girls. They, they run the troop really. Yeah, it sounds like they have some really fun ideas. Like I wish I was doing some of this stuff. <laughs> it can be, it can be a lot. <laughs> So one of your superpowers is being a person who doesn't like being in the spotlight. You do a lot of hard work, but you let everyone else shine for it. So tonight is your night in the spotlight, spotlight and I wanna ask you, what's something that you've learned from being a Girl Scout volunteer? Um, just to never say no, that you can't do it or that it's impossible because there's always a way to figure it out. And the girls have taught me that. Um, they're very ingenious. And if you give them a, a problem or something that they really want to do, um, be it in the community or in just in their little troop, because we have six girls, they will find a way to do it. It's, it's amazing. You put your mind to it and um, you see that develop and you see it, you know, go move into what from a planning to reality, just, never think that anything's impossible so that's wonderful <laughs> i'm quoting here from someone who nominated you today um and they said doreen is kind honest and caring she leads a very busy life but she always makes time for girl scouts she's a great leader to the girls and volunteers each and every day doreen truly lives by the girl scout law congratulations doreen thank you <laughs> So now we are going to be honoring two volunteers who are being awarded the Girl Scout Appreciation Pin. I started out as a Girl Scout as a girl for eight, about eight years. And uh, 
39 years ago, my oldest daughter brought her note home from school, and uh, it was a registration form for Girl Scouts. At that time, there wasn't any Girl Scouts in Viola here, and so I put down that I would be a co Um I became a Girl Scout leader nine years ago when my daughter was in kindergarten because I wanted to build relationship and help her have a group of friends that was really, truly um, a sisterhood for her. I was a Girl Scout growing up and I know just how important that can be. Girl Scouts have, has made me more confident and gave me many adventures that I would never have had if I wouldn't have been a Girl Scout leader. And I did lots of things that I would have never done before. My advice for troop leaders is to enjoy the experience when they're little because as they get bigger and they explore and grow, you're going to see the fruits of your labor and the time that you've spent with the girls and those relationships will become even more important as they hit their teen years. Also, don't be afraid of volunteering. It's an awesome experience being a Girl Scout leader. Okay, I'm excited to hear more from them, but um, to give you a little intro, this pin is awarded for outstanding service in support of the Girl Scout leadership experience within their local community, and these women are exceptional. First, Charlene Hamilton. Charlene, she is co-leading four Girl Scout troops in Viola, and she hosts a cookie cupboard every cookie season and in a normal summer, she helps to lead the community's Girl Scout day camp. Charlene, I hear you've been pretty active in Girl Scouts and leading troops for almost 40 years now? Is that right? Yes, 39 years. Wow, that's amazing. If you could go back and give yourself any advice or any words of wisdom as you stepped into a Girl Scout leadership role for the first time? Do you have any idea what you would say to yourself? Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> That's okay too. <laughs> So I've also heard that as Badgerland has gone virtual in the pandemic this year, you figured out how to be a virtual troop leader, and you've been on a lot of the enrichment programs that Girl Scout has run this year. We ran a list actually, and we saw that you've attended over 26 virtual programs, including the new Democracy Brownies badge and designing robots. So that's really cool. Um, one of the really interesting things about a virtual world is that you get to discover new things and kind of push yourself to different limits and try new things. So you've definitely learned stuff from pushing yourself to try new things in this virtual world. How has that been special for you or what are some things you've learned, I guess? Um, I went on these videos and Zoom and things to um, learn how to do some of these badges with my girls and, and uh, I've learned a lot and found out that they aren't as hard as they sound, for one thing. And I found out that I can learn something new at my age. I learned how to Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So when Charlene was a girl, she earned her first class award, which is equivalent of what we have now as the Girl Scout Gold Award. Um, a fellow Girl Scout said, and I quote, the love that Charlene has for Girl Scouts comes through so clearly in her smile and in her laugh. Congratulations on earning the appreciation pin, Charlene. Thank you. For a round of applause. <laughs> so now our spotlight goes on to Amanda Hinthorn. She's a longtime troop leader, and we received nine different nominations for Amanda. This is a woman who's well regarded in her Girl Scouting community by her girls, by her parents, and also all the other volunteers in her service unit, which includes Cottage Grove and Monona. Welcome, Amanda. Thank you. 
So you do it all. You lead a troop of cadets, and you're respected for letting girls take the lead in their troop. So why and how did you decide to kind of let the girls take on their leadership role in the troop? Um, I think when the girls were little, um, we needed that structure that came from adults. But now that um, the girls are bigger, they really are creating their own space. And so for my co-leader and I to be able to say, um, this isn't really about us or what we think Girl Scouts is, but it's more about who you are and what you want to explore and the experiences you want to have before you um before you're done and you go off into the world became really super important for us. And that's why we've shifted to a more girl led focus, which sometimes is a very structured meeting and sometimes is just the space to hang out and be. That's really nice. Um, in reading all of the nominations for you, the word significant comes up quite a lot. So people were saying that you make significant contributions in your communities by all the ways you serve and support not only the girls, but their families and fellow volunteers. I'm curious how Girl Scouts has changed or influenced you. Um, I think since I started as a troop leader, it always goes back to um, those are my girls. And the relationships are just so incredibly important as you grow your Girl Scout family from your troop to your community to other leaders that um, become a part of that. And I was lucky to have a lot of troop leaders and um, community leaders that set the tone and set the bar for us in our membership area to grow in that way. And so there were a lot of good leaders that led by example before I even got involved in Girl Scouts. That's really inspiring. So now I'm quoting. And Amanda has served her troop and community for many years with enthusiasm, generosity, and the true spirit of sisterhood. She has helped offer support to new leaders, host valuable events for our girls, and has been innovative in leading us in new ways to reach even more girls. Amanda truly makes the world a better place. Let's give her a big round of applause. Thank you. You're welcome. So now I will pass it off to Olivia. All right. First, I want to thank Akshita for that wonderful introduction of everyone and all the award winners. And I also want to thank all the award winners and everyone for coming. So as you can see on screen, there are the volunteer awards committee. So this is a committee that uh, is made up of myself, some other Girl Scouts in the council, some delegates, um, all Girl Scouts, uh, whether volunteers or girls. And we went together and we got all of the nominations together and we decided, you know, all these wonderful volunteers need some way to be recognized, some way to see all their effort that's been put into everything they do. So um, with being Girl Scout, there are tons of different opportunities girls can have. So there's the Youth Leadership Council, which Akshita and myself are a part of. Um, there's also the Media Girl Council. Um, there's the Global Roundtable, which Akshita did mention and talk about a little bit, which you know, that's uh, something that's really cool, and hopefully we can work together this year. Um, and then there's also the Volunteer Recognition Committee. Committee. Uh, my mom is actually also um, a Girl Scout volunteer, and she's on the committee as well. And everyone on the committee, everyone on the call, we just saw how important it is to celebrate you all. Um, sitting on that committee, committee is also Cheryl Robinson, Lee Schmidt, and uh, my fellow Youth Leadership Council members, Sydney Harbison, Harbison and Lizzie King, and then my mom, of course. So from everyone at the council, all the staff, everyone, we just want to thank you all for being Girl Scout volunteers. Thanks, Olivia. 
what a special time we're sharing right now. And um, reading the comments in the chat log, I'm just so mindful of, of the power of us and how it takes energy and engagement and enthusiasm um, as we come together to, to celebrate these nine special women who indeed transformed the world. In fact, they are representative of, um, of so many people who lean into Girl Scouts, parents, other leaders, staff, people coming together to make a difference in the lives of the girls. And, uh, you know, in a, in a time that's challenging, um, it's pretty powerful to experience that. Many of you know that we're coming off a summer of uh, virtual programming. We ran camp. We had, uh, we had fairies and mess makers. We had uh, programs from, uh, from women that were zooming in from Southern California talking about deep sea diving to uh, an Olympic rower who was a bad, uh, Black Hawk Girl Scout who's on the Olympic team. We've had people talking about robots and democracy and civics and uh, community service and just uh, the out of doors and so many different ways that we come together. We were delighted that there were girls from 29 different states and several countries, including Nicaragua, that were part of the Badgerland Girl Scout experience this year. And it was a great reminder and is a great reminder how we're part of a worldwide movement. It does take all of us it takes all of us working together to support the activities of the girls and the women. And some of those businesses and organizations and community groups provide financial support. Some provide in-kind services. Others offer program experiences for the girls. Some share their time. These partnerships are really important to the success too. And tonight we're going to acknowledge and celebrate one of them. This evening we are honoring the Elver Park Neighborhood Center for their work with the Girl Scouts within the past year. There were 23 girls who had access at the neighborhood center for their Girl Scouting experience because it was hosted at the neighborhood center. In just a second, Janine and I are going to, to provide some uh, dialogue back and forth about why uh, she recommended that the staff at the Elver Park Neighborhood Center, which is under the helm of the Wisconsin Youth Company, has made such a difference in the lives of those 23 girls. So Janine, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Marcy. Excellent, all right. I know you were a, a proud uh, proud advocate for the yes. Elf Park Neighborhood Center, and though we regret that they're not able to join us to, to this evening for to celebrate, we know that we're going to get the award to them. And when, when you think of the Elver Park Neighborhood Center, Janine, what do you think of that best describes their engagement with Girl Scouts? The best thing to describe their engagement would be they're very welcoming, they're very compassionate, they're really for the community, and they believe in bringing the community the community together uh, through resources and programs, and then Girl Scouts bring the girls of those communities together. So I just really feel like we fit together, our puzzle pieces really fit well together. And I, I think that you've been uh, working with those girls and having them become leaders and entrepreneurs. Can you talk yes. a little bit about what, uh, what programs they've been working on? So uh, two of the programs that they work, they have worked on, uh, the first one was the science of happiness. Um, and we did a lot of uh, crafts and we made gift bags for the nursing home or for a few nursing homes and children's in the hospital. And then the last thing that the biggest thing that we did was boss girls. Now they loved boss girls because it taught them how to be entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurs. And what we did was we made candles, we made soap and we made bath bombs and those things and we're crafting those those items so they can become entrepreneurs. That's fantastic. And we're grateful that you're part of the, uh, that you lead the outreach effort. We know that you do that in partnership with a couple of amazing AmeriCorps volunteers. Um, and together you've been representing Badgerland so well. We honor you, Janine, and your leadership, as well as the Elver Park Community Center. Thank you so much. Thank you. Before we conclude our time to, uh, together, I'd like you to take just a moment to reflect on this question. What draws you and keeps you engaged at Girl Scouts? In other words, 
What's your reason why? If you would take just a minute and reflect and then type your thoughts in the chat log, and this part is important. Don't hit the send button quite yet. Sarah's going to let you know when all the wonderful responses come flooding in with the whys. But for right now, I'm going to turf it over to Sarah to help provide additional guidance. Wonderful. Thank you, Marcy. Yes. Yeah, so as Marcy said, be thinking right now. Just don't hit the enter button or send, but think, reflect on your why and put it in the chat log if you're able to. But don't, don't send it yet. We'll give you a minute to reflect because once I say to go, it'll then come flooding in and we'll have all of these whys for us to read. So we'll give you just a minute. I'm going to pause. I'm going to reflect back on Karen's beautiful singing. I, I, it's hard to see when we're on the little Zoom squares, but I was getting all misty-eyed, Karen. That is one of my favorite songs, and you just represent it so well when you sing. Just beautiful. So, all right, everybody's reflecting on their whys. And now on the count of three, hit your send, and we're going to see it pop in like popcorn. One, two, three, hit enter. Pop, 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 popcorn. Oh, I love that. It makes me hungry. I will say it does make me hungry. Oh, and I just saw, just to read a few, the travels, the experience. What Girls and adults, that's key. Girls and adults doing activities they wouldn't get a chance to anywhere else. I, that is so true. Empower our young ladies to create a positive change in their community. That's a beautiful why. The beautiful why. Space that has for girls, girls are the rock stars, strong characters. These are wonderful whys. So thank you all. Keep putting more in there. We, of course, are going to collect all these wonderful words you've said of all of our honorees tonight. We're going to collect those. We'll share them with them. Don't worry. They'll get those. Uh, we also will share these whys because what we do is we like to spread that around. And so let's hear for some other of our members about their whys. Why do I do Girl Scouts? Because of the girls, of course. I'm in Girl Scouts because it gives me opportunities I can't do otherwise. I joined Girl Scouts because I wanted to form meaningful relationships with the girls in my community. Girl Scouts has helped me learn how to be a better team player. I like Girl Scouts because of all the opportunities it gives me, but it also gives me a positive outlet to put all my energy into while I still get to help people, which honestly really means a lot to me. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Girl Scouting has impacted my life in many different ways, but some of the biggest takeaways I have are all of the important life skills I've learned, which range from first aid and building a fire all the way to like business, leadership, communication skills. I volunteer with Girl Scouts because I want to empower today's girls to be tomorrow's female leaders. Girl Scouts! Isn't that inspiring? So much joy, so much growth. I love the words partnership and relationship and leadership and engagement. Thank you for uh, thank you for being a part of this amazing organization. On behalf of the board of directors, uh, we honor the nine that were being celebrated this evening. But we acknowledge that you are uh, the leaders in front of the leaders, and there are a lot of leaders, a lot of parents, a lot of girls that lean in, just like Olivia and Akshita and so many members of the team and the staff. Thank you. It's, a, it's an evening of celebration and appreciation, and we look forward to the year and another impactful experience and one of engagement and joy and celebration. Thanks you all, thank you all for coming. Let's make this the best year ever. Congratulations, everybody.